I need at least one round. Whoa, this is on. Whoa, I need at least one round of applause for my slide. Thank you. Obviously, you're learning how to give great presentations from the best. Um, <laughs> just to make a counterpoint. Uh, thanks for all coming. This is super nice. So, like, like Jin said, um, the Global Diversity CFP Day has essentially the goal to increase the variety of people that come on stage at global events. Um, this is important for a few reasons. So they, there are more people within five flight hours around Singapore than pretty much anywhere else in the world. Like it's like one, almost one third of the world's population. Uh, yet all the technology that we use all day, or most of it really, is kind of created in the US or in Europe. Um, that's just how it grew. It's nobody's fault really, I guess. Um, but I think it's like a good advantage to have more representation from here on the global stage as well. So anybody who has developed something, is creating something important or works with something and wants to share their experience should get the chance to do that, not only at events here, but elsewhere as well. So the idea of the Global CFP Day is essentially getting you all, all across the world so that you can get in touch with local cultures, with local experiences, and they can get in touch with the experiences from here. Um, that was one of the main reasons why we started organizing JSConf Asia here. It became one of the main reasons, really. I, I would love to take credit for it right from the start. But really, I just wanted to have a fun event. Um, that was the main reason. And then it became more and more responsibility over time. So JSConf Asia exists essentially to bring great excuses to people to come here and present about great tech and to showcase talent from here in tech that wants to share. So with that, I have to say thank you because I assume that all of you kind of would like to contribute something to some event at some point. So you're the heroes here, in a way, trying to put your, your efforts out there um, and make this world hopefully a bit more colorful in general. Um, now, going to the CFP. The CFP is a process and every event has it slightly different. Um, it's for call for proposals, sometimes called call for speakers or call for applications. I mean, it's all kind of the same thing in the sense that it's there to give community members the chance to contribute to an event. Um, ours became rather um, optionful, let's say, uh, as you can apply not only for talk, but workshops, art contributions, and so on. This is based on the idea that events just are better the more people contribute to it more people get invested in it, more things are being presented at the event and shared and talked about and showcased, creates a much richer experience for everybody. And uh, that's why more and more conferences essentially just see themselves as a stage that you need to cram in a lot of people and get everybody excited about it and get them to do something in some form. Even if you're just lazy, just pay a ticket, it's fine. We'll still love you, you still make it, make they still help us make it happen, um, but really what we like is people that contribute something to the event, like giving a talk. And so that's how most conferences uh, work, and that's why most conferences have these call for proposals. Um, they're typically web forms or email submissions, something like that, and uh, they rely for their content curation on people applying there. And I think what we want to go through today is what can we apply with? Uh, what is likely to be accepted? How do I write a good proposal? How do I make that a good talk? You know, how do I go from there? Like what, what do I need to sell here if I really want to be chosen to go on stage? Um, and then there are many criteria. Like I'm a conference organizer myself and for the last six years I tried to curate a program for JSConf Asia. This year I have a bit of help from Hui Jing as well, which makes it a bit easier. Um, we try to be incredibly objective. Um, on how we choose, and we have a lot of criteria. Um, often the criteria on where you are based is one of the most important one because it's directly tied to economics. If you need to fly everybody from New York here, it's gonna be a very expensive event because it's a lot of flight tickets and hotels we need to pay for. Um, so in general, there's, we need to somehow mix it all up and figure out how to make it economically viable, make it diverse and interesting, cover all the topics we wanna cover, um, 
and get like a wide variety of, of different voices and opinions and experiences on stage so that you can have an exhilarating time at the event. Um, it's not an easy task. Um, it's a kind of fun task, especially if it works. It's really rewarding in the end to do that. Um, and I, I think it creates really, really cool events in the end. Now, uh, this year we got about 600 applications already for the event that we have in June. Um, that sounds like a lot. If you subtract all the ones that are not from Southeast Asia, you're suddenly left with maybe 60, um, which is still more than we have space, but um, just to showcase you where, where people are doing this, where, where people pick up that kind of uh, self-confidence and say like, I'm gonna go try this and I'm gonna apply for something because I know something or I wanna go there, I wanna try this out. And you can do the same. You can do the same. You can go to any other JSConf or many other events out there in the web space or other tech space and just say, I would love to visit Denver or Columbia or whatever, like any place in the world where there's a conference. JSConfs are all over the world now, for example. And you can just take your idea and apply there. It takes about five to 10 minutes to fill out a form, specifically if you're a bit prepared for it. And who knows, maybe you get chosen because most of these conferences have diversity criteria, meaning while they would love to represent local efforts, there's always going to be this 30 to 50%, depending on the conference, where you have international speakers and you have some budget for it. So you might even be flown out there. <coughs> I, I think that's actually why most people apply to our conference because Singapore has gotten a quite good international <coughs> reputation now. And so many people are curious and want to come here. And why not try to give a great talk and get a free ticket? Like that's, I think, the biggest excuse on why people put a lot of effort into a lot of applications. Um, so that's kind of how the mechanics work in the background and um, how you can benefit and how you can benefit the event. Uh, as part of that, I would like to showcase a few things like that were my favorite things. And from there, start a conversation about what to do, what not to do in these kind of proposals. Um, and so every year for the last years, I kind of create a, a top six, top 10, depends on how many I find, of quotes that I find in uh, applications of actual people that apply for my conference or our conference now. Um, and some of them are just hilariously funny or misguided or like leave you like, if you as a curator read it, if you try to put yourself into my shoes, having to pick a good talk for a conference and you're gonna be like rolling your eyes and like, okay, like why would that make sense? Um, so we're gonna go through that and uh, let me just show you a bunch of those. Oh great, I even didn't organize the slides in the correct order. Perfect, two slides and I fucked it up anyway. Um, okay, so here's the top six that we had uh, a while back. Number six, wears very interesting cardigans during his presentation. This is really something people write in their presentation, uh, in their application for JSConf Asia. Like, they, like the, our form specifically is a bit unique because we don't ask very precise questions. We just say, give us your top five. Why do we need to let you or that special person that you're recommending on stage? Like give us the best arguments you can come up with on why we want that person. And so people write, there's very interesting cardigans during his presentations. And to be honest, as a curator, I kind of like that because it signals a certain amount of humor. You know, it obviously depends on the other reasons that that person gave us to make that decision, but it's, it's fun. And to be honest, this year, I don't know, like I, we created a, a character limit this year. So you had to, your application had to be at least 250 characters. And I feel like it kind of sucked the fun out of it a bit. Like I felt like this year the applications were all very like aspir aspiring, uh, like very effortful and hardworking and like, like people put very serious applications in. And like I feel like the years before where we didn't have that character limit, we got a lot more just random fun and sometimes stupid stuff. So I kind of miss that a bit, but yeah. So number five is from Texas, this biggest state in the US next to Alaska. If you have applicants from Alaska, you should take them first. Um, which I, I thought was also really, shows that there's a little bit of humor again. Um, then number four, element curries of a new CSS hotness, so hot, I'm so cool, so cool. <laughs> like I don't know what happened there, but like, 
I don't know. I just like humorous things, and like whenever I, I think it just makes it so much easier for me as a curator sometimes to just like go through hundreds of applications, and you're like, uh, like you know, the '50s talk about whatever, and a bit of humor always helps. Uh, number three, stay awesome, stay performant. Uh, I thought that's, that was the end. That was just a quote that somebody had put in in the end. Uh, then number two was kind of hilarious. And he actually made it into the, the, the conference in 2015. Turned out a little bit of a dry talk, but like from a, from a um, perspective, it was very rich. It was very scientific. Um, and I get to why all these things are interesting in a bit. Um, and number one, loves bacon. You love bacon. Bacon is good. Um, so that the whole point of this is like a little bit of humor is always a good thing. Um, if you, you have a hard time doing that, there can be other things that you choose for yourself by going deep into topics, by really showcasing that you know about the topic, sharing some of the knowledge that you have about the topic or your experiences and tell the story. Um, there's something there for everybody. Personally, I like humor and that is due to our event having three specific items that we curate for, which are educational value, inspirational value, and entertainment value. So if you have all three in your proposal, you're very likely to be accepted. If you have two of them, that's the absolute minimum to be accepted, meaning your talk needs to have something that is educational to the audience in some way, shape, or form, right? Meaning you're sharing something. And in that sense, I would encourage you to rather go deep into a topic rather than broad. Um, talks that just cover everything from the start to the beginning and just rush through all the, the, the items are typically more of a show off. Like it's more like the, the only thing that the audience really can take away from it is like, oh yeah, cool, you're awesome. And like, that's not really a good talk. Like it's not, it doesn't give anything. It's more like, look, I made it on stage and I'm awesome. Um, so what I would like to encourage you to do is typically go deep and really share something about one topic. Famously like Lea Veru, I don't know if you know her. She's a um, speaker from Greece that does it more professionally these days and works on the CSS spec and, and other things. Um, she can do a 45 minute talk about border radius, CSS border radius just round borders. Um, but there's just so much about it. And I encourage you to watch her talks on YouTube. There are a lot of them. And it's just, she goes so deep into that topic, it becomes absolutely fascinating. Um, and so that's typically a good talk. If you take something, even a mundane topic, we're going to have a talk this year about numbers, like numbers in JavaScript. And it turns out you can stretch that forever. It's just infinitely deep of a topic if you really go into all the nitty gritties of it. Um, and you'll, you'll definitely find most of the audience will take something out of that. So that's just general, like go deep, not broad. Like that's a better talk. Um, stories are good. Telling stories is always fantastic. Like if, if you have a really good story to tell, like something with ups and downs and things going wrong and right, and you can actually showcase that, it's a great thing to do. Okay, let's go into uh, the next year. Uh, so th these were my top 10 in 2016. Number 10 was because it's me, uh, has a nice beard, uh, wants to be like me. It's also, it's a great reason who, who can deny that, uh, has great table manners, your code will explode, I thought was fantastic too, uh, really wants to meet Tim Oxley in person, uh, ordered a pizza on stage at JSConf before, or I'm a simple guy, I like my champagne bubble bath at precisely 105 degrees and I put my $1,700 Japanese unwashed denim pants one leg at a time, just like you. Uh, number two, no humans are permitted in the maze, but the warm glow of its reactors make it an ideal home for millions of giant rats. I mean, that's about the story part. Uh, and number one, I'm willing to present in a dinosaur onesie. Yeah. So you can kind of see, like, audiences love entertainment. And this is the third part that we try to curate for. Um, educational, like I said, go deep, not broad. Um, inspirational and try to showcase people what they can do with their knowledge that they have that they weren't aware of before.
that's kind of the my definition of inspiration. Like uh, specifically on the web, it's just quite easy to do because a lot of people might build React apps, but you can actually use the same kind of syntax, the same kind of thing that that you've used to create amazing animations or even do very simplistic machine learning um, without really adding a lot to your knowledge. You can just take it out of context and suddenly you can do amazing things with it and it becomes really inspirational to people um, that that's something they can do now. Uh, so inspirational, I think, is, is, is something that's very exciting to stretch people's imagination on um, what they could do. Uh, I think one of the first talks that I remember that I thought was really cool was a very purposeful one from Kate Chapman in Indonesia where they used web development at the time to work for OpenStreetMap and map out all the, the flood levels in Indonesia uh, for disaster prevention. And um, she gave like hands down code on like what they're using, how they're using it to create mapping data uh, on the web to, to do that and photos on site on how they map things out and, and so on. I mean, programming is everywhere and it's sometimes crazy to see where people apply it and how and that becomes really inspirational. Um, those are all good things in a talk. It's like interestingness. And the entertaining part, like the I'm willing to present in a dinosaur onesie, uh, is the third thing, right? It's like, it's fun. Like, uh, I loved Tim Holman last year who gave a fantastic art talk um, about generative art, how you can, with very simplistic coding skills, can create very artistic um, outputs. And uh, I don't know, he introduces people to his LinkedIn profile that's just full of dogs like dog pictures, and uh, he's, he's just an average toothbrusher. So, like that kind of stuff makes it just so that people really don't mind following your content if it's like something about it is entertaining. And that doesn't mean you need to be funny or anything, but just wear a dinosaur onesie. Um, JS and drones is cool. Who disagrees? Um, makes awesome homemade pizza. I'm not sure why that's relevant, but I thought it was cute. Um, my friend asked me to apply here, which <laughs> was also like, okay, great. Um, that might not work, by the way. <laughs> Just FYI. Has never even visited Singapore yet, actually, which is most applications. Like, if they're honest. Most people are like, I've never been to Singapore. I would love to go. And I'm like, cool. It doesn't really help me curate, but it's like... <laughs> Of course, if you can organize a visit from Captain America, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> oh, I forgot one in between there. Leads global developer relations at a software company valued at nine billion. Not sure how that's relevant, but impressive. I don't know. Like it doesn't really, like these kind of things don't make you necessarily favorable. I think people try to use them as like, oh, you know, I'm serious. Like I know what I'm doing. Um, I'm not sure. It, like we have sponsored talks for this at our event. But then it depends. I think some events might take this more serious than others. We don't, really. <laughs> I'm like, good for you. Um, we all know FOMO, the fear of missing out, but do we know of its slightly easier to pronounce cousin, the fear of choosing the wrong JavaScript framework? Um, again, like these kind of things tell me that that person at least wants to make something entertaining in a way so that people are more interested to follow what he wants to share. Um, number three, Trump's tweets move markets. So what if you could create a bot that made stock trades based on these tweets? Uh, it's a very simple setup. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, you got me. Um, how do we do that now? And uh, it just showcases a certain talent for, for a presentation to be able to do these things. Uh, number two has some really new and exciting content to share. Wow. <laughs> I mean, how can I say no? Um, I really hope to get tickets to the event, but buying tickets is too mainstream. Um, it's just like, yeah, thanks for trying. Uh, so, I mean, people put all kinds of stuff in there. And like, to be honest, this year they are way more boring than that. Um, like people really started to put a lot of effort into applications, um, writing out really deep stories or, or ways of how they want to present it. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually quite interesting this year. Uh, I didn't expect it and I think it's really because of the character limit that we made people write a lot more so that it feels more serious now or something. I, I don't know what changed, but like I felt like in the last years there was a lot more fun stuff in there, which personally, 
I like because it makes my work a bit more entertaining. Uh, and I think a conference gets more entertaining too because of, of these kind of things. It's always good to not take it too serious. You know, professional, yes, but not all too serious. It's like we're still all just human beings and it's cool when that comes across on stage as well so that the gap between audience and speaker is not too wide. It's actually, JSConf was founded on the principle to be a non-stage conference and I wish we could still do that, but we're too big now that we have to go for venues that are having enough seating and that sadly all have a stage. Um, but the first events of JSConf all around the world were just flat floor conferences. So it was just round tables and uh, you would walk in front and you were standing on the same level of floor. And that was a psychological thing so that people feel like these are just others of us. They are not in any way better or different. They're just developers wanting to share something. And I thought that was very, very, um, like a good choice of setup. And I wish that we could still do it, but it's just, you don't find venues for 500 people that are flat floor. Um, and the people in the back wouldn't be able to see much anymore. So we have to sadly put a stage in. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, sp the spirit behind it. So, and then I hope that uh, throughout the day today, we can get a little bit into like making you craft example CFPs and uh, see what you have in mind as of right now, what you would uh, or could present on uh, and then helping you make it something that uh, seems appealing to conference organizers so that they hopefully accept your talk to a conference worldwide. Back to Huijin. Okay, okay. So, uh, next person we have is 